Hi everyone, if you didn't see last week's episode, we lifted out so we could get started on fitting our kill cooled fridge and a few other jobs, including checking the fiberglassing we did to the kill earlier in the year. So keep watching because there's some really cool stuff coming up, including getting relaunched so we can test the new fridge and continuing to make preparations for our winter sailing plans. Today should be the day when they come and do our engine mounts. And what I want to do today is carry on with the, the fridge installation, but also rectify some issues with the anti-fouling. This boat, as you can tell, is copper coated which is a system, uh, it's a very, very good system, but there's copper filing suspended in a resin. When, we, when I did the keel repair earlier in the year, somebody gave me a bag of copper dust and I couldn't afford to have it done properly. I couldn't afford to buy any anti -file. And anyway, the shop was shut because it was a Sunday. So I, I, the, the day after the keel repair, I used a bag of copper dust, mixed it in with some regular West System epoxy and rolled that on. I did about 10 coats and then I did what you should do and used my electric sander to scuff that back to bring the copper filings to the surface of the resin. Now, I know that wasn't the correct way to do it, okay? And I knew it wasn't at the time, but I thought I'll do this as an experiment because I know I'm going to be lifting out again. When we lifted out, we actually discovered that the copper coat had sort of done a reasonable okay job. Uh, there's only a couple of patches where it hadn't worked. However, it's only been in the water for the summer, hasn't it? So, um, but the mistake I made, there's two issues, apart from just not doing the job properly. One was I applied it the day after the repair and I didn't re-key the surface. There's a couple of areas where it's flaked off. And uh, also I, the sander that I was using was a cheap one and it, it bit the bus dust and died halfway through the job. So we put it back in the water in the full knowledge that we were going to rectify or attack it again on this lift out. Boats typically get lifted out every year anyway, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, the repair is solid. My job today, apart from the fridge installation and a few other things, is amongst, in between the rain showers to flake off any rusty uh, rubbish and apply some regular Hempel um, anti-foul. Uh, it's all we can afford at the moment. We did discuss doing a proper copper coat repair with the guys in the yard, but it's out of our budget at the moment. So I'm just gonna at uh, attack the uh, offending areas with just normal anti-foul like everybody else does on their normal boats, like you see on every boat in the yard, which will be absolutely fine. And it will see us over till another year or two when we need another lift out. I've been fairly aggressive with this and flaked off everything pretty aggressively so now all I've got to do is um, feather that edge because the rest of this isn't flaking at all. It's really, really securely bonded and adhered. You might be wondering why on earth Boat Folk, the boat care team at Boat Folk, are doing the engine mounts of all things. Well, let me show you. So Sean, one of their engineers, came over and he, um, we went over the whole boat. We looked at all the through holes. He said they're all fine. We looked at the stern gland, that's fine, the prop's good, the cutlass bearing's good. One thing I've noticed is when the engine's in neutral, it's smooth as a kitten, purrs like a baby. But in gear, there's a bit of a wobble, and Sean investigated that, and he discovered that, at very least, the front two engine mounts are a bit knackered. Here are the aft engine mounts, the rear two, and you can see, look at the gap there between the bolt head and the metal and look at the condition of the rubber and the gap between the rubber and the top plate, right? Now, look at the front ones. There's the gap between the metal and the bolt head. Look at that. And this is the, the condition of the rubber itself and the gap in the top. So there's a much smaller gap there than there is there, look. That's what it should be like. Although you can see the rubber on those is a little bit perished as well. So I don't think the engine would have kind of come off its mounts or anything daft like that. But it's one more thing ticked off that just makes the boat a safer and more comfortable place to be. So I think I think that's going to make life a lot quieter for us. Much, much quieter. Um, I'm all about, as you know, getting this boat to be as quiet as possible. I've spent a lot of time insulating and sound deadening the engine bay. Um, but if these engine mounts, well, they'll make the engine smoother. They will know, obviously, Sean will disconnect the prop shaft, so he'll do the prop shaft alignment, so we know that'll be good. And it'll be set on brand new mounts. I'm so grateful to them for doing this. This is just like a weight off my shoulders. It's the kind of job I could do, probably, 
flipping heck. Uh, much, much better to have somebody professional do this. So this is Sean from Boat Folk. I'm not going to point the camera in his face too much. But I've dismantled as much of the uh, bits of the engine as I can. I've taken off the sea strainer. Look at that. And I've taken off the pipes, one of which had been rubbed through a bit. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, Sean's going to change those engine mounts for us. Show us one of the new ones, Sean. Well, you've got one of the new ones there. So that there is a new engine mount. And um, are they the official Yanmar ones? Yeah, these are genuine Yanmar mounts. Amazing. Fantastic. That's there. So what do you anticipate being the issues with changing this job? Uh, hopefully nothing. Um, the main issue is going to be getting the alignment of the engine correct. Yeah. Um, hopefully all the bolts come out the engine bed. That's, that's my, yeah. that'll be my biggest concern, biggest trying concern. to get those out. And, uh, and of course, because the forward two mounts have collapsed somewhat, the new ones are going to raise that bit of the the front of the engine up slightly so it might actually be that the engine goes back to where it should be <laughs> yeah, or it might be that it's an absolute pain in the ass to get in well I'm hope yeah hopefully it will go back to where it should be um, and you were saying about vibration as well wasn't yeah it? there's a bit of vibration and a bit of movement you know we noticed when we turn it over in gear it's it's doing this a little bit at the front end so um but that's just one extra thing so thank you very much for taking yeah. this on and the other thing that we noticed the other day when we were dismantling thing, things was that this pipe which is one of the raw water pipes had dropped and had been rubbing in, rubbing on the coupling and look at that it almost rubbed all the way through i'm just pausing this here because andy has just kind of brushed over the seriousness of this issue but let me explain in a little more detail this pipe had come out of the clip and had dropped onto the prop shaft causing it to wear almost completely through this is the seawater intake and if it had decided to finally give up while we were away it could have genuinely sunk the boat. We hadn't noticed this because it was on the underside of the pipe at the back of the engine. We have now repositioned the pipe completely so it absolutely cannot happen again. Andy will show you more about that in the next episode. Thank you so much to Boat Folk and especially to Sean for picking up on this during their inspection. Um, so I'm going to nip and buy some more of this pipe it wasn't leaking i don't think but i'm going to nip and buy some of that and once sean's done the engine mount i can put all brand new hoses on as well so we've now got all new diesel tank new diesel hoses new diesel filters new impeller we'll have new water hose new engine mounts it'll be pretty sorted by the yeah, end of this yeah. won't it? right brilliant thank right. you very much status report i have brand new hose for the engine sean has discovered there's been a bolt sheared off in the engine bed so these engine mounts are now off in a sense they're undone the the engine puts a spunded on a on a jack because they've sheared off a bolt in the in the in the engine bed and just drilled another one alongside so sean has now gone to go and get a grinder and tools to try and drill those uh, the, the snapped stud off and do it do it properly the upshot of that is that they'll be fitted just before we relaunch which is fine um and but what it means for me is that after sean has gone today i'll be able to paint clean and paint the areas that i couldn't reach before because there was all the bits of the engine attached and there's just too much stuff in there and another job that i need to get on with is continuing with the fridge installation now i'm still waiting for the bracket to mount the compressor in the cupboard but i want to have a look at where i'm going to run the pipes uh, and so on uh, um, they're going to go through this bulkhead and up there so i'm probably going to give that area a clean and a lick of paint and this is the area i'm talking about that's the um galley sink stopcock uh, but yeah i think that could all do with a clean because the compressor is going to mount in here we have a break in the rain so i've just been doing some sanding which means i can actually start getting some anti-foul on you'll see where i've just been sanding the bottom of the keel i've been keying the copper coat and it goes that uh copper color
Another job I want to tackle and make some progress on at least while the kids aren't here is um, making the bearers for our new keel tank. Now I've cut these uh, big, big bearers, big bearers in uh, mahogany um, and I'm making basically a frame for it to sit on with the mounting lugs uh, that Dave welded on. So the uh, tank will sit on the bearers, it'll also have support underneath so it's not just going to be hanging off those bearers, it's going to be supported on a block of wood and then a neoprene cushion. Uh, but I'm just prepping um, inside the tank here, uh, the you know where it's going to sit. So this is the progress with the beams around there. I've got a bit of cleaning up to do, obviously. The saloon now looks like this. Look at that. That's all painted out. That's all dry because I painted it yesterday. Down there now, I've sculpted the bottom of the saloon bilge so that the water will run into that into that corner where I'll have the lower bilge pump and then the higher bilge pump on this plinth here. These are the pipes for the fridge system and I wanted to paint that cupboard out if you remember. So this is now all painted out ready for me to put the compressor in on its bracket which has arrived. camera on super wide angle so it's probably looking a bit fish eye but that's just because I want you to be able to see all of this. Now I've got my compressor mounted on its lovely stainless what's it there and I've had the down the drain pipe for the sink in just to make sure that it, it clears which it does but I've taken it out so that it's easier for me to do the rest. Now the next bit is the tricky difficult bit. This copper pipe, this cupra nickel pipe, has got quick connects on and they're colour coded. So this blue one is going to go to that blue one. See the blue stripe to the blue stripe and there's a yellow and a red. And on the other end, the end that comes from the keel cooler itself are the yellow and the red. So what I've got to do is drill a hole to bring those pipes through and up here. Well that's fine, I've drilled the hole and I can pop those uh, fittings through there no problem but on the other side of the hole I still haven't finished work in here and this is a lot grubbier isn't it? I don't want to uh, paint that after I've put the pipe work through so I think what I'm going to do is paint here this bit and then have a cup of tea and hopefully the paint will cure enough for me to put the pipes through. It might be that I put the pipes through tomorrow because I think I need to, I need to do more work in this area before I run those pipes. Because I don't, I don't want to be screwing the pipes, you know, pushing the, putting the pipes through and then trying to paint round them. The paint pot fell in there upside down. Never mind, that's fine. That is now what used to be our big fuel tank. Look at that. Now I didn't need to paint that because it's going to have the stainless steel one in it. But I thought, do as much prep as I can, eh? So it's got that big mahogany frame all bonded in 
that's nice and all I've I've um, filled in around the edge with thickened epoxy so that any water that gets down here like runs down the sides will run down this channel down into that bilge there and will be picked up by the bilge pump the tank will sit in here and then I'll put a lid over the whole thing as well many people asked when I did the floorboards last winter why I didn't screw them all down and finish the job and this is why because I've finished the plumbing and the wiring and the fuel tanks and all that kind of stuff once all of this stuff is done I'm gonna you know finish the floorboards but they needed to do it last winter because they were splintery and horrible there we go You remember when I made uh, the cockpit enclosure roof? Well, I used this uh, green armor cell divinyl foam. It's a structural construction foam and you, you shape it and cut it and then you fiberglass over it with cloth and resin. Well, I've got a bunch of it left over and we're kind of storing it. So I didn't want to throw it away. I've got uses for it, but we're storing it under mattresses and in places on the boat that, you know, it's taking up space. So I've cut some to make a cover for the diesel tank, which is here. There it is. Um, it's in three pieces at the minute, but of course, by the time I've finished it, it'll be in one piece. Now, I don't have time to fiberglass that now, but I'm just gonna store it there rather than storing it under a mattress because that's where it's gonna end up. So it's not taking up room in the rest of the boat. But that cover will help um, protect the fuel tank from getting water down the sides of it. And once it's uh, glassed up, it'll be incredibly strong and it will also form part of the restraining mechanism to keep the tank down. Um, I mean, the chances of that tank coming out of there, you'd have to turn the boat upside down. And if you turn the boat upside down, bad things have happened. So I don't anticipate that ever being a problem. It's it's buried in the keel uh, and it's a, it's a bugger to get in and out anyway. So with that area prepared and, you know, that piece of foam roughly cut, I can now start to feed these pipes through um, to the fridge compressor. Now, I will say, obviously, this compressor is so easy to install. I, I genuinely believe anybody can do it. You don't have to be, uh, if you buy one of these, you don't have to employ a yard or engineers to fit it for you. It's perfectly doable by an amateur. Um, the only reason it's more complicated for me is because I'm actually sort of renovating the cupboards and, and the bilges and stuff as I'm going along. So it's there's more of a process for me than it perhaps would be for you if you're on a you know a, a production boat this is an old boat and everywhere i look there's stuff that needs you know sanding and painting and, and freshening up but this area is now sanded and painted and freshened up my hole is drilled i've got this area painted so that i can put the pipes up there nicely and and that's my next task I think I'll put a pipe clip here just to retain that. So that's the arrangement of the pipes in there. I need to put the, um, the drain pipe for the sink back in now and that should come round the outside of this. Uh, all the electrics are on this side so there's no chance of anything dripping and then like I say I'm going to fill that with foam. These wires here are from the control unit which I've mounted above the sink there. Melissa doesn't like that she wants me to mount it inside the sink Fridge. Uh, but it's fine there for now. My logic is I want to change it for a digital one with a digital readout. In which case you want it outside the sink. So it's having a digital readout inside the sink. Fridge. Uh, 
but it does say in the instructions you can put it inside or outside. Um, when I showed it to Melissa, she was like, oh, why have you put that outside the sink? Fridge. And I said, because I want to put one with a digital readout on. Uh, and she was like, oh, okay, fair enough. But, um, so I might move that but it's fine where it is for the time being. And if I can't get a digital one, then I'll probably move it inside the sink. For goodness it's, sake, it's a fridge. Uh, as I was saying, these two wires are for the control unit and they go on here. Look, can you see that? They go on, let me get some light. They go on there. And it doesn't matter what the polarity is. That doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is that you have the switch here set to 12 or 20 to 24 volts that switch changes the voltage and that you're obviously that when you put power to that one and that one the top two pins you must make sure that you put um the correct polarity there so that's that's now ready to put power to it i'm not going to put power to it until we're back in the water because this is a keel cooled system and i guess that's the only downside with the keel cooled setup isn't it is the fact that um with an air cooled setup when you're ashore you still have a fridge with a keel cooled setup when you're ashore you don't have a fridge but that's where our bluetti uh box comes in really handy so we've got the best of both worlds because we've got one of each Melissa went out for lunch with some friends who met us here and has left the pram here. So I'm going to look really weird walking round with a pram round a boatyard with an empty pram. People are going to think, what on earth is that man doing walking round with an empty pram in a boatyard? Uh, but there is a reason for it. There's quite a simple explanation. Uh, just it, it's not one that will occur to people when they see me in wet weather gear walking across a boatyard with an empty pram. <laughs> it's grim, grim weather. Okay. You tired boy? You a tired baby? Dad's got the camera on. Keeping his socks on under his baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's a big one. Read. Oh, I've just sat on the baby wipes. Ew. <laughs> Hi. Haven't <laughs> seen you all day. No. Hi. No, no. No, no. No, no. You're tired. Tired. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> no, no. Night, night. No, no. best. Fine with that. Sean is back here today and he's already beavering away fitting our new engine mounts look there's one that he's taken out and there's one that's in look at that very nice very nice oh there's a new one in the other side as well so they're going in nicely and I've done as you can see the new pipes for the raw water side of things which is great so once you've done all four mounts yeah we'll see where we are and see what we've got to do to adjust mm. but yeah checking the alignment is a bit that's going to take the time yes yeah yeah actually changing the mounts isn't that big a deal no uh, now i now i've done the wiring and i understand it a bit more and i've had the had it all apart and back together and apart and back together as was yeah i'm going to strip all the wiring off the engine and and run all the cables again yeah getting in some conduit it just tidies it all up it does yeah and all of this you know it's just it's fine it's all functional it's and not it's all, secured it's not properly secured the biggest thing is, is vibration on the cables you know the weight of the cable put it on the back of the switches yeah um that's that's one of the big things that's why you 
I'd like to come and have a look at how you would actually secure cables and the kind of conduit and cl clumps and stuff that you use because I'm just using you know p-clips that I've bought off Amazon. P-clips would do it as long as you know as long as you've got decent copex or to run it in yeah if you haven't got that as long as it's p-clip back yeah yeah really, yeah you know not just guiding it it's actually the right size and holding holding it firmly yeah yeah, yeah. so as long as you can do that just take the weight off all the back of the switch gear it takes ages really to get to know the boat yeah and figure out where the bloody hell you know because obviously a boat like this that's been around since the 1970s has had so much so many different people work on it over the years yeah and the problem is not everybody takes out all the old crap so no exactly i'm still pulling out wires that you know i'm you know and then you, you look at it and you think if i rip that out is is something going to happen is yeah. is nothing going to happen is it connected to something at the other end yeah. <laughs> you know? and that's a big problem that we get you know you start tracing wires and you get the other end it's not even connected yeah and even if nobody else knows what it means at least you do yeah yeah that's it Right, I'll leave you to it. Okay. It's been just such a crazy week uh, of boat work this week. I've got so much done. I'm exhausted though. Uh, one other thing that I have done is I've uh, put a new cable from the engine to the anode stud, which is down there. So that's a, that's a brand new cable there um, because there actually wasn't one. Uh, what I discovered is there was a bit of wire attached to that with a um, a lug on it, and it was broken. It was it was not connected, um, which is amazing that we haven't seen any sort of galvanic issues with the boat whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. But I remember in Deganway, I looked at the anode and thought it hasn't degraded very much. Oh, you know, but I, uh, the problem is the washing machine lives here. <laughs> so getting to that anode, it's not the kind of thing you need to get at very often, is it? So it's it's you know it doesn't it doesn't matter that it's buried, but it did matter in this case because I discovered it wasn't actually connected. Um, anyway, no harm done, and I've put a new cable on there. So that's another job ticked off, which is great. Uh, now, what I want to do is prep the boat because we should be launching very shortly. This is always exciting and nerve-wracking. We'll just hope that we don't sink. No, I haven't removed anything that needs putting back or... <laughs> Don't go away, uh, we're about to see how the launch goes. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how they pick this boat up and stick it on a trailer like this and move it along uh, as though it's nothing. 17 tonnes this boat is and it's just being driven along on a, basically a radio controlled car. Uh, and you're about to see how uh, they get the boat back in the water in the slings. It's just an incredible thing to witness. Um, uh, up the side of the screen you'll see our patrons who are amazing. Thank you very much, we love you all and uh, thank you for supporting us you keep the channel going uh, and thanks to you for watching uh, we appreciate even if you're not a patron we appreciate you coming back every week and watching uh, we make these videos for you um, and uh, we just love you coming back and watching the videos and commenting and liking and sending us all the love cheers guys uh, keep watching because this is the bit where the boat goes back in the water We'd just like to say thank you so much to everyone who sent something for Jack's birthday. We'll show you more about that next week, but we're incredibly grateful. Also next time, we'll see if the launch revealed any other problems. We'll check out our new penguin fridge and Andy gets started on another huge project.